we realized that people couldn't go to the grocery, didn't want to go to the grocery, felt unsafe. Businesses are being forced to get creative in order to stay open as the pandemic continues. How one idea is proving to be successful for a local catering company. It seems like we're in too much of a hurry to pretend there's not a great big world event happening, and there is. Parents want more options for schooling when it comes to keeping their kids safe. The reasons why moms and dads in Carmel have an issue with a school district safety plan. Coming up, we'll tell you how universities are working to keep students safe as they start to move back into the dorms. This is RTV6 News at 5, working for you. Now at 5, just in time for the weekend, a return to summer weather and August temperatures. And we have certainly enjoyed the stretch of cooler temperatures, but that is coming to an end. Storm Team 6 Chief Meteorologist Kevin Gregory is here with what's in store as we begin our weekend. Kevin, you can definitely feel those temperatures climbing. Uh, we made it to 80. That's an accomplishment. If you look at the first seven days of this month, five of the seven temperatures have been in the 70s for highs. Unusual start for the month of August. Anywhere in the metro area, you've got a beautiful evening on the way, and that really is for all 92 Indiana counties. Temperatures around Indianapolis, 80 in Castleton. Plainfield also at 80 degrees. As you look at the regional temperatures, they're all comfortable. 78 in Peru, 83 Bloomington and Terrell. Hope what's going to happen over the next 24 hours. The wind is going to shift to start coming more out of the south and that will boost our temperatures. I show you the radar, not that we'll need it tonight or tomorrow. It is Sunday, our next best chance for showers and thunderstorms. Maybe a fading area of rain in the morning north of Indy and then some thunderstorm development in the afternoon. It's beautiful now, as you can see, across central Indiana. There's the cloud cover uh, that will fade away. Temperatures this evening falling into the low to mid 60s uh, by the time we get to midnight, still in the upper 60s at 11. I think we'll have some fog overnight. One more night where temperatures are in the 50s for lows, as you can see. Then those overnight low temperatures will work their way back into the low 70s within the seven-day planner. So enjoy another beautiful night tonight. We'll talk about other changes for the weekend and the pattern that becomes repetitive for next week coming up. We'll see you soon, Kevin. Thank you. For the second day in a row, the state of Indiana reports a record number of positive coronavirus cases, more than 1,200. The exact number reported today, 1,253. Those results reported between Tuesday and yesterday. This eclipses yesterday's previous record by about 200. The statewide total is more than 72,200. The overall positivity rate remains at 8.8%. Ten more Hoosiers have died from COVID-19, those deaths occurring between July 31st and yesterday. The statewide total now stands at 2,821. Nearly 33% of the ventilators in hospitals around the state are available, as are nearly 81% of ICU beds. It is worth noting here that of the ventilators and ICU beds in use, the majority are being used by non-COVID patients. And an update to a story we brought you yesterday on the News at 5. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine is now negative for COVID-19. He announced the news last night after testing positive earlier in the day. He took the first test, a rapid COVID-19 test, as part of the standard protocol to greet President Trump at an airport in Cleveland. When the test came back positive, he returned to Columbus and did not meet the president. He then took a second test called a PCR test, which looks for specific RNA for COVID-19. It's an extremely sensitive test as well as specific for the virus. The test showed he was negative. DeWine said he got a call from the president today to ask how he was doing. And the pandemic is forcing business owners to get creative in order to stay open as some statewide restrictions remain in place. We've showed you restaurants launching curbside delivery and other businesses launching online stores. Tonight, our Nicole Griffin is showing us how a local catering company impacted by event cancellations is now serving Hoosier families. When weddings and events were canceled in March due to the coronavirus, the number of meals being made here at Nameless Catering decreased majorly. That's when they came up with the idea to start making frozen family meals. And just this week, they sold their 5,000th meal. It's just nice to have it in the rotation for our meal plan. 
every once in a while. Amy Kavicki is a night shift labor and delivery nurse. She also has two kids in high school. During the pandemic, she discovered Nameless Catering's new frozen family dinners. I take a nap during the day and wake up and throw dinner in the oven and get ready for work and then I'm able to eat with my family and leave. Kavicki says it's nice to have this option for a healthy meal and it also helps her avoid trips to the grocery store during the pandemic. Nameless Catering CEO Jeremy Brown says the idea for frozen family meals is one he's had but was never able to launch it because he was so busy with catering orders. But when events started getting canceled and families were forced to stay home, he decided now was the perfect time. It has also allowed the company to reopen two of its kitchens that were closed during the pandemic. We realized the people couldn't go to the grocery, didn't want to go to the grocery, felt unsafe. Being able to open our, our reopen our Anderson kitchen, initially that kitchen was 100% doing frozen meals. Now it is doing some catering now as well, but initially when it was doing 100% frozen, I mean, that was that was bringing back jobs. Now with weddings and events picking back up, Jeremy says they are busy again, but that doesn't mean frozen meals will be discontinued. He says they will continue delivering them throughout central Indiana as long as there is a need. Working for you, Nicole Griffin, RTV6. And Nameless Catering delivers the frozen meals within an hour of Anderson and Indianapolis. They also expect to start shipping meals all over the state in the near future. Students in Carmel returned to school on Thursday, but some parents we spoke with say they are not confident in the school's safety plan. They say they want more options for safe learning. RTV6's Stephanie Wade shares their concerns and has the district's response. As more cases are appearing each day at school districts across our area, parents in Carmel are worried if their student will be safe once they return next week. Well, I'm very concerned, obviously, with all the spike in the cases in the last two weeks. Stephanie Stewart wants to send her children to school, but safely, she says. Carmel High School and middle school students were given the options of completely virtual learning or a hybrid of in-person and e-learning. Elementary students, however, were not. As a mother who is working right now, she says doing fully e-learning is difficult on parents, and she would like the hybrid option too. Two days at home, two days e-learning with classes at 50% capacity. Stewart is also worried about students being spaced only three feet apart according to the CCS plan, as opposed to six feet. Something Dr. Jennifer McCormick, the state superintendent of public instruction, addressed yesterday, saying it's safe enough to separate desks by only three feet. She took these concerns to the superintendent, but the district is not budging on offering hybrid for elementary students. Talk to the health department and they point to the schools and say we're giving them the freedom so they can be nimble, I heard yesterday. Well, it's not nimble. There's a huge loophole and the parents are caught in the gap and they have no recourse. And that, quite frankly, is unacceptable. Stephanie Wade, RTV6. And the superintendent tells RTV6 the reason the elementary students are not offered the hybrid option is because school leaders believe those students can follow the guidelines set by the medical community. And it's the best educational program they can offer K-5 through students. With the number of students in the high school and middle school, they did not believe those students could follow proper safety guidelines and social distancing. Right now, Metro Police are investigating a shooting that left one person dead and two injured. This happened around 2 o'clock on the 400 block of Sandra Lane near Troy and Madison Avenues. Police found two people at the scene and one was pronounced dead. Officers pulled the other was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Then officers pulled over a vehicle that left the scene and found another person who had been shot. That person was taken to another hospital, also in critical condition. Right now, police are still investigating what led up to the shooting and are asking for any witnesses to share information with IMPD. Metro police are also investigating a deadly shooting involving a juvenile on the city's east side. It happened early this morning on the 300 block of North Bradley Avenue. Officers found a juvenile male who had been shot and died soon after arriving to the hospital. Details about the shooting have not been released. If you have any information, call Crime Stoppers. That number is 317-262-TIPS. Metro Police believe they've cracked a string of business robberies on the north and northwest sides of the city. Police say a traffic stop at I-465 and the Pendleton Pike off-ramp led to evidence that linked the 51-year-old driver to a recent robbery. When officers searched the man's home, they found evidence linking him to nine robberies at the locations that you see on this map. 
Most of them are gas stations. One location was hit three times. The crimes took place between June 6th and Tuesday. Dozens of pounds of methamphetamine are off the street thanks to IMPD and federal agents. Metro police officers and a canine first discovered 15 pounds of meth on July 30th while investigating a shipment of illegal drugs from the West Coast to Indy. That led to the discovery of more drugs the following day on the 2400 block of East 80th Street. There they found about 60 pounds of meth, $21,000 and cryptocurrency. Police arrested two people from California and one from Tennessee. Still ahead on the news at 5, back to school at IU. Students from all over the country and the world will be returning to campus this weekend. The plan in place to keep everyone safe and the expulsion warning. Paint by numbers for adults. The beautification project in one community tomorrow that you are invited to take part in. Temperatures in the 90s out in the Dakotas, 94 in Bismarck, the warmth drawing closer. We'll focus on that and rain chances coming up. Colleges and universities in the state are getting ready to welcome students back on campus. Fall semesters are set to begin this month. RTV6's Megan Sanctorum went to Bloomington today to see what Indiana University is doing to keep students, faculty, and staff safe. Campus is pretty quiet today, but that will all change over the weekend as students start to move back into the dorms. When you think of college move in, you probably picture something like this. Thousands of students on campus, many bringing friends and family to help out. This year, a much different scene will unfold as IU staggers move in dates and times to promote social distancing. University leaders say they will also have all incoming students take a COVID test upon their arrival. Testing sites will be set up on campus and they will continue to regularly test students and staff members throughout the semester. We also know many classes will be online rather than in person. In person class size has been reduced to follow CDC social distancing guidelines. We spoke with some freshman athletes who have already moved into the dorms. Many of them saying it's not the typical start to the school year, but they're happy to be able to be on campus. It's been just a lot of having to adjust and be okay with change because you never really know what's going to happen and then Obviously just trying to be as safe as possible just so we can still like go here for as long as we can and hopefully keep everything under control. They definitely like did a good job at letting us know through emails and stuff like the social distancing that we would have to go through and the precautions that they were taking to make sure everybody was as safe as can be. Um, but I think it was definitely different than like former people moving in have experienced. This is an unusual year for everybody. We're going to be working with students in a way that we obviously didn't need to do before on the health care front, but also being understanding and trying to make sure that they get through this year successfully and healthily. University leaders say they have around 540 dorm rooms on campus that have been set aside for those who do test positive for COVID-19. They will be working closely with IU Health to provide virtual screenings and health care visits for students as well. Working for you, Megan Sanctorum, RTV6. And IU is also asking students to follow local ordinances that prohibit large gatherings like parties. They say students who violate those could face expulsion. Today, the Butler Bulldogs found out they will not have a football season this fall. The Pioneer Football League announced it would not hold conference games in the fall. Instead, the league will explore possibly trying to play next spring. Butler's three non-conference game ha games had already been postponed because of COVID-19 concerns. Now it's time for your forecast, your Storm Team 6 forecast here on this Friday. But before we have Kevin do that, congratulations are in order. It is your 31st anniversary at Channel yeah. 6. Kevin, congratulations. 31 years. 1989 that puts us at, right? Yeah, isn't that something? It just goes like that. But it took, Mark, until the 31st year for something brand new to happen, and that's me in my basement. Yeah, working oh, from Oh, that's home, true. Really 31 so. years later. <laughs> so who knows what's ahead? What I've done is I've saved every forecast sheet, not for uh, the 31 years, but since I've been here in the basement, and you can see it's quite, I, I'm working double-sided too, so I'm not wasting paper, but uh, those are all the old forecasts. 
Let's talk about something new for the weekend. Temperatures will move back into the 80s. We touched 80 today. We're well into the 80s by Sunday, perhaps touching 90 degrees by Monday. But August is back, whereas you might have questioned that for a while because our temperatures were so cool. It will definitely feel like summer. And we're somewhere between very sticky and tropical feel by the time we get to Sunday and Monday across the entire state. Rain chances remain relatively low through the weekend. They'll go up and remain consistent, as you can see, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of next week. A daily chance for showers and thunderstorms. Lafayette, the warmest to the north at 82. Follow the Wabash River on down to Terre Haute, 82 degrees there. Bloomington's at 83, where we just heard Megan talk about students returning to Bloomington. In the morning, we'll watch for patchy fog. The warm air is lifting. The skies will be clear and the wind light. The rest be there for some patchy dense fog overnight and in the morning. One more comfortable morning. Temperatures in the 50s, a refreshing start to the weekend. The change comes as we warm these overnight lows and the afternoon highs climb 65 Sunday morning. I'll show you in a second overnight Saturday night into Sunday. There'll be a fading area of showers and thunderstorms to the north trying to make it down into central Indiana, but not during the day Saturday. Enjoy lots of sunshine, temperatures in the mid 80s. Afternoon temperatures pretty consistent. The wind will be light, but light out of the south southeast. We put this in motion it's starting to swing around. It will rotate and come all the way to the south southwest by Sunday. There are the showers and thunderstorms overnight. That's about three in the morning on Sunday. Chicago towards South Bend, then they fizzle as they drop to the south. We'll see how uh, that changes as we get to Monday increasing, I think, the overall chance for thunderstorms. 87, the magic number on Sunday, 30% chance for thunderstorms in the afternoon. There's Sunday by the time we get to one o'clock, then there at three, you can see these would be very isolated, not expecting widespread thunderstorms for the second half of the weekend. Temperatures will be warmer early next week and the rain chance will increase. Seven day planner. Temperatures over the next seven days are warmest for both overnight lows and afternoon highs as we get to uh, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. Temperatures will be in the 70s for overnight lows. So, Mark, should I just throw these in the air and see where they land? I got time to pick them up during a commercial break. Let's just do that as I go to you. I'll just throw them up and see. I got a lot of clean now. Yeah, call in the rest of the family to help clean it up. <laughs> Congratulations, Kevin. I'm glad you've been with us for 31 years, and we hope we get you for 31 more. Thank you, Kevin. Well, are you looking for a way to help beautify a central Indiana community? You have some time tomorrow in Bargersville in Johnson County. Artist Stacy Drain designed a mural that was projected and traced this week onto the wall of Taxman Brewery in downtown Bargersville. Tomorrow, the Johnson County Community Foundation is hosting a community paint event. It's where the public will be able to come out and in a socially distant way, put some color into this mural. The painting will be done in a color by numbers fashion. The fun gets underway tomorrow at 9 a.m. Should be a good time there. Teachers are known for digging into their own pockets to help their students. Still ahead tonight, the effort coordinated by one parent to help out with that and make their wishes come true. An important part of going back to school is making sure children have all the school supplies they need to be successful. And that's where your generosity comes in. The Salvation Army of Indiana and Walmart are teaming up this weekend for the Stuff the Bus event. When you shop today, tomorrow, or Sunday at one of 16 Walmarts in central Indiana, you're asked to pick up something extra for a child in need. We would love for the public to uh, be, as they have been in the past, generous to purchase additional school supplies. Sometimes you're going to purchase for your own children and you can afford one more backpack or one more box of pencils or markers to purchase and then drop it right here in our uh, collection bins at the participating Walmarts around central Indiana. All the donations will remain in the local community and will help the Salvation Army provide back to school support to local children in need and supplies to restock classrooms as the school year progresses. 
and teachers often spend a lot of their own money to make sure their students have what they need. But in Hancock County, they're getting some help with that. Hancock County resident Callie Cooper has started a Facebook group called Support Our Hancock County Teachers. Nearly 2,000 people are in the group. It's a place where teachers can post their Amazon wish list with things they need to have a successful school year. Cooper tells us the group has been very successful and it's good to see some good in the world right now. People are saying that their whole entire wish list has been provided for them. And uh, we're also seeing just a lot of really cool stories that are um, kind of past students, parents, or, or even past students coming on and saying, you know, what a difference uh, in their lives their teacher made. Again, that Facebook page is called Support Our Hancock County Teachers. Cooper says she's also seen similar groups for other counties. IMPD identifies four officers accused in a lawsuit by two women of using excessive force. The new details revealed this evening, tonight at 6. And still ahead on the news at 5.30, the escape plan that did not work out so well for one Indiana man. The tight squeeze that led him right to jail.